Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Proença and today we're going to talk about Web3 build a smart contract in Rust of FreeCodeCamp. So this is our last problem about uh, Web3, okay? And basically in this project we're going to build, we're going to create and deploy a smart contract using Rust. So I highly recommend you doing this project once you understand a little bit more about Rust, okay? Rust is a language that you can search on the internet and, they, uh, and then you can see some good things about the syntax. It's pretty similar to JavaScript if you take a look in this project. And only do this project once you have finished the previous ones okay here um, basically they are telling us that you're started with rust library consisting of all the unit tests and integration tests that we are expected to pass the boilerplate already contains the necessary crates to complete the user stories but we need to import them basically in here we're gonna create our smart contract and we have to pass the unit tests and an integration tests okay we have here some user stories that we're gonna follow we have here some hints some resources here you can take a look more about rust programming language if you want to learn more about it okay we have some tips and in the end we're gonna run the test and we're only done when we pass all right so knowing this we're gonna work only with the lib.rs file that is our rust file the other files we're not gonna change okay but we're gonna work with them to import to run the test but the only file we need to worry about is this lib.rs okay so let's start so let's take a look about our user stories in the first item they're telling us your smart contract uses was was pack to compile the rust code to javascript for node.js okay so in here we're gonna start importing this was was pack all right so we're gonna do use was pack sorry was bin gin prelude colon colon and i start okay so this way we are able to use this was be uh, bin gen. Then now we're gonna create your smart contract exports an initialized function that returns re result JSON and re JSON error. Return JSON value and JSON error. This function takes no arguments. This function returns a context wrap in a JS value. Right now I will be worried about only creating the structure. Whatever is inside the function, we're gonna do it later. Okay. So basically in here we're gonna we have to create a function called initialize. So to create this initialize function, I'm gonna let us use this was bin gin, okay, to allow this uh, the, to compile the Rust code to JavaScript for Node.js, okay. So we're gonna start here with hash was bin gin, okay. And now we're gonna create a function, so it will be public fn, and the name of the function is initialize, like they're expecting, okay. We have no parameters, so we're, it takes no arguments here, empty empty parentheses, and then. They are telling us that returns are re returns result js value js error. So we're gonna return this. Okay, result js value js error. Okay, and then I'm gonna open up in here. I'm gonna say to do so we don't crash our code. Okay, the to do here means that we're gonna continue later. All right. So this is our kind of doing the first user, the second user stories. We're gonna re go back here to finish. Okay. Now let's create the set click function. And here, basically, the set click. If you take a look in here, we want to know how many users have clicked a button on our web page. So we're gonna create this function to keep track of how many clicks we had. All right. So to do this, we're gonna create here now the same structure that we were doing in this case. I'm gonna copy, but we have some differences. So it's a was bin gin. We have to use this. It's a public function. Here I'm gonna call set click set click um here the function returns a result js uh, value js error so this is the same structure this function accepts a js value with the context type and this function also accepts a string as the second argument which is the address of the user who clicked the button so now we have to add things here in our parentheses we have to receive some arguments so first they're telling us that we're going to receive a context okay and this context will be a js value and we're also going to receive an address and this will be a string, okay? And this is pretty much what we need to structure this function. Later on, we're going to return in here. Let's see the next one. Then your smart contract export a get contract account function that returns a result, blah, blah, blah. So here it will be pretty similar. Uh, this function accept a JS value with the context type and this function returns an account wrapped in a JS value. So let's fix in here what we're going to do, okay? Basically, I'm going to copy this initialize. It will be pretty similar, okay? But instead of initialize, I'm going to call here uh, get contract account. And they are telling us that this function accept a JS value with the context type. So here we're going to receive context and it will be a JS value. The part of returning we're going to fix in the future, okay? This account that we're going to return. So this is pretty much what we need right now. 
okay? Then, now we're gonna work with the other parts of our function, that it, your library should export a strict name account with the following fields, total click, which is a U64, and clickers, which is a VEC string. So now we need to create a structure of an account, okay? So we need to create a structure of what is an account, so in the future we're able to return this in this function get contract account. So let's build. So we're gonna create this structure here in the top, okay? But before we create this structure, we need to create a crossover between JavaScript returning Rust and JavaScript, okay? So to do this, we're gonna use this the following. We're gonna say use third colon colon and here we're gonna import the, the serialize and the serialize this serialize and serialize okay great now let's create the structure so first i'm gonna say the this the serialize and serialize so derive and we're gonna allow here to serialize and deserialize serialize and the serialize okay and now we're gonna create the structure of an account so it will be public struct account okay and what are we expecting to have inside this account we're expecting to have here the total clicks and the clickers so here i'm gonna say pub so we know that we need uh, total clicks total clicks right and here it's saying that it's uh u64 so we're gonna say here u64 all right and we need the clickers and here clicker is a vec string basically a vec is an array okay so it's an array of strings and here we're gonna say pub clickers and it will be a vec string, all right? And this is pretty much what we need to create our account. Then they're telling us to create a structure for context. So now we're gonna create a structure for context. I'm gonna copy the same structure we did for account and I'm gonna do some changes. So here, instead of account, I'm gonna say context. And here they're telling us that our context uh, should have the following field, base account, which is uh, account. So here, I'm gonna remove this, and we're gonna have here pub base account, that will be uh, account, okay? And we're gonna import the whole object that we created in here. That's it, that's it that we need so far, okay? Now that we create the main structure, basically, now let's go, let's dig into the, the problems and complete the project. Uh, so now let's start our initialize function. Basically in our initialize function, we need to initialize the context and the account. Okay, so we need to initialize here the total clicks and the clicker, all right? So let's start in here. I'm gonna create a variable called context, so let context. And we're gonna use the object, the structure we just did, so context in here and then open up the curly bracket. Now we know that context, if we take a look in here, we have this property here, base account. So we're gonna say base account, okay? And base account, we know that it's an account. So here we're gonna create the object of an account. And we know that an account has total clicks, okay? Total clicks. And since we're initializing, we're gonna start the total clicks to zero, okay? To keep track from zero to the, the, the total amount of clicks we have in this project. And then we need to create the clickers, all right, and since we know that vec string is an array of strings, we're gonna initialize an empty array, okay? So we're gonna do vec empty. And that's pretty much what we need. Once we create this object, we need to return this object in a JSON version. If you take a look in here, they're telling us that you can wrap a value in a JS value using JS value colon colon from third. So we're gonna use this to convert our object into a JSON JS value. Okay, so after all, we're gonna use the word OK, and OK means that we're gonna wrap the result, okay? And we're gonna do the, the JS value, colon, colon, the from third. Okay, but this is not enough. What we wanna, what we, from third. What we wanna convert into a JavaScript variable, the, our variable context, right? So here we're gonna use context. We need to use this m% here context because m% create a js value which is a string okay and then we're gonna do dot unwrap just to avoid having any issues okay so if we run the test i'm not sure if we're gonna pass any of them but at least i think we're gonna pass the initialize integration test or not because we didn't finish the whole things okay yes we didn't pass but that's okay soon we will be passing all the tests so now let's work with our set click. Basically in our set click, we have to get the, the current value of clickers and we have to update these clickers, all right? And I think we also have to update our, uh, we have to update the total clicks, so we're gonna add one, and we have to store the address in our clickers, okay? So how can we do this? If you take a look in here in the tips, you can serialize the JS value using the into insert method. So this way we can grab the current value that we have, all right, for total clicks and clickers and convert 
this in a way that we can use in here, okay? So first, in that part, we are receiving a JS value and the address as a string, okay? We're receiving context and address. So the first thing, I'm gonna serialize our context. So I'm gonna do a let mute context. And here I'm gonna say context, sorry, let mute context, and it will be context equals to context, and we're gonna use this into third, into third. Okay, so this way we are converting our object into uh, we're making this serialized so we're able to work with in JavaScript. Okay, we're able to get the context right now. Then we need to be able to get the account, okay? Because if you remember here the structure of context, context contains an account, and inside the account we have the total clicks and clickers. So we need to get into our account to be able to work with total clicker, total clicks and clickers. So here we're gonna do a let account. And we're going to do here the ampersand mute context. And uh, here we know that our account is in the field base account. Okay, that's pretty much what we do need right now. Then, now that we have our account, we're able to manipulate the total clicks. So account dot total clicks. We're going to do a plus equals one like we are uh, usual. Okay, so we're adding one to the current value. And our account dot clickers, we're going to add in the end of our list the address that we are receiving. So to add in the end of the list, we use dot push. And here we're going to add the address. Once we finish this, we're going to do kind of what we did in the previous function. We're going to use this OK and we're going to send the JS value. OK, so OK, JS value, third, unwrap. All right. And this way we're passing the set click function. Now let's work with the get contract account. So in the get contract account, our only task, if we take a look in here, we're gonna, re the function returns an account wrapped in a JS value. So we just need to get the account, okay? So we're gonna do something similar to what we were doing before. We're gonna get the context the same way as we got in here, okay? Probably not exactly the same way. I will remove this mute because we don't wanna make this mutable anymore, okay? And we're gonna get our account using this let account is equal to ampersand context dot base account. So this way we're getting our account. And in the end, we're gonna return this JS value, okay? But we're not gonna return context anymore. They're telling us to return account. So here I'm gonna do from third and I'm gonna send the account. And this is pretty much what we need to do, okay? Now let's run the tests and see if we're passing them, the unit test, okay? And then we run the other tests. So to test, we're gonna run this first command, cargo test dash dash lib, okay? And here they're telling us that we're not passing, couldn't couldn't compile due to two errors. Let's see what are the errors. Here uh, we have, we need to add a semicolon. Okay, let's add this semicolon in here. Let me just double check uh, where it is. We need to add a semicolon here after the initialize. Let me see the part in here. Okay, that's the first part. We need to add, let me save. I'm adding the semicolon in here. Let's run again. Let's see if we pass the test. So if I run again, cargo test lib. Now we only have warnings. This is good. And if you see in here, we're saying test results. Okay, seven pass, zero fail, zero ignore, zero manager, blah, blah, blah. So this means that we're passing the tests, okay? Now we're gonna run another. We have only warnings and warnings are fine, okay? Now let's run the next one that it was, pack test dash dash Firefox dash dash headless. And once we run this, we have to wait a second here. We only have warnings. It's building here, only warnings because we're using a deprecate version of when we use from third and into third, but that's fine. So let's wait here a little bit. And here they're telling us test result. Okay, four passed, zero fail and zero ignored. Set timeout to 20 seconds. It will still continue here. And then test result. Okay, eight passed, zero fail, zero ignored. It will continue running in here. So, so far we're passing all the tests and this is the expected part. Okay, we're running. So we pass all the tests. That's great. Now, just to finish before we run the tests, okay, we need to do this final part in here. You should deploy your smart contract using node. Let me shrink in here. You should deploy your smart contract using node, node deploy, blah, 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 and the path. You should run node, smart contract, set click to add at least three clickers to the contract. So let's do this step and then we're going to pass all the tests, okay? So initially, we need to run was pack build dash dash target and we're gonna say node.js all right and this way we're creating the target in here and now we're gonna deploy our smart contract so we're gonna do node node slash deploy dot js 
uh, space package, that is the name of our folder here in the sidebar, slash build a smart contract in rust.js. Okay, so this way we're creating our smart contract. And here, if you see smart contract deployed with ID one. Now that we have the smart contract, we have to uh, add at least three clickers. So how can we add clickers? We're gonna do node, node slash smart contract, oops, smart contract.js. The ID is zero because we know that this is the ID of our smart contract. I'm gonna say set click. And now you can say the name of uh, someone that clicked in our smart contract. So I'm gonna put my name G. Okay, so this worked. And now you're gonna do uh, two more times. So I'm gonna put Leo and I'm gonna put Rod. And then we're adding three more clickers, okay? I believe this is what we have to do. Now if we run the test, we're supposed to pass in all of it. We're passing, let's see, the functions. And that's pretty much what we have, like we see in here. Congratulations, you passed all tests, okay? So this is pretty much what we have to do for Web3. If you enjoyed this content, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye. If you would like to have full support from Programming Expert via Telegram group and group coaching, check the description below.